acknowledging greetings. Good morning to you all. Good morning. Thank you, that's better. Um, I observe and respect all protocols. Um, the assignment that I've been given is uh, not a, a very challenging one in that I'm simply uh, going to give a rundown of uh, what transpired yesterday. Uh, indeed, the conference is about unpacking the new national curriculum for sustainable development. Uh, probably before I uh, go on with my presentation, I would uh, want to, uh, to, to highlight the people who uh, graced the occasion yesterday and uh, gave some presentation. We had our dean of faculty uh, giving some welcoming remarks, uh, Dr. Hathanyewi, um, our pro VC, uh, Professor Mashiri, um, also had a, a, a talk and welcoming the, the delegates and uh, highlighting the objectives of the, the conference. The Honorable <laughs> Minister Dokora, um, Minister of uh, Primary Education, was here to grace the occasion, uh, including the Permanent Secretary, Dr. Utete Masango, uh, Dr. Kariana Marongwe, and so, so, on, or so on, also made a presentation. Professor Maravanyika and uh, Professor Nerera for yesterday iced the cake by, prese by presenting uh, or demonstrating their academic prowess on the matter of the uh, new national curriculum for, for Zimbabwe. The conference started um, with a song a piece that we were given by some young men who took us down the, the memory lane and said, no woman, no cry. <laughs> I just asked myself to say, what is this to do with uh, the new curriculum? <laughs> but uh, later on, I realized that probably he was trying to remind us about the issue of inclusivity, that it's not true that uh, if men don't have us, they wouldn't cry. It's not, that is not possible. And uh, the minister also said um, that was again an untruth. Anyway, um, the issue that was raised was about whether the curriculum that we are, we, we are talking about is new or revised. And um, from my own observation, uh, I think it's both new and revised. Uh, revised in the sense that we had a, a, a colonial curriculum. That's, that was designed and used before our attainment of independence in 1980. And then the post-colonial uh, curriculum, which is the new curriculum, uh, based on the findings and recommendations of the Ziramasanga Commission <coughs> and the processes that uh, took place to come up with the curriculum that we now have we were told that the Ramasaka um, uh, Commission of Inquiry, the um, recommendations that came up were not implemented because of various reasons, which include um, the land reform uh, exercise, the Wondo Emina that uh, was taking place during that time, uh, the sanctions, and um, other national activities during that time. The purpose of the uh, conference uh, is to clarify the misconceptions 
surrounding the new curriculum. And the, the myth that um, probably there is something that has really gone very bad with uh, Honorable Minister Adobua. And uh, it has attracted a lot of debate, very controversial debates. I think we've been watching a debate in Parliament and so on. Um, uh, I think you would agree with me that the new curriculum yesterday was unpacked. Can I have some more water? Water. It was um, really unpacked or disclosed or put in the open for all to see and understand. Just take a me. Conceptions, 
were very well articulated and clarified. Um, among the things that she mentioned, she talked about the exit package, the type of product that um, the new curriculum aims to produce. A, a person who is a holistic with uh, usable skills that are uh, not of an academic nature but very practical. And that at any given stage, the student should be able to invent some production uh, in order to earn a living. Uh, she spoke about the environmental challenges that uh, uh, we are likely to face uh, along the way, which uh, include the, the changes, um, the change of mindset, uh, and so on. And uh, then the new roles expected of us as educators, um, that there is need for change in our approach in terms of methodology, uh, whereby in the past it was mainly teacher-centered and we are need to move to the learner-centered um, pedagogy and andragogy. Then uh, she also called upon all of us to think outside the box, uh, to be flexible, to be innovative, And um, she also spoke about the performance markers. Then the pillars uh, of the new curriculum. She highlighted the legal and the regulatory frameworks, teacher capacity, development, uh, the teacher professional standards is very critical. These are critical success factors of the new uh, curriculum, infrastructure development. We went to town. She went to town to talk about this and um, the need for research and innovation. Um, after the uh, ten sec, we got uh, our two professors, Professor Maralanyika and Professor Nerera who came to demonstrate their academic prowess by going intellectual about the issues of uh, curriculum development implementation. <coughs> At this point in time, I call upon uh, Piri, I don't know whether it's a Miss Piri or Miss Piri, to take over and give us some highlights on the presentation by the professors and other speakers. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm not missing. Some of you might be wondering, say, what, what's happening? That's a good one. Is he the miracle prophet of the day? <laughs> Miss Perry is not around, uh, but we can still proceed. Uh, maybe I have an interesting. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Barazimba, for such an uh, enlightening, enlightening um, recap on what was on the presentations yesterday. Uh, maybe on a lighter note, so that at least as we are going to be, as I'm going to be welcoming our team, it's also good to, to have some lighter moments where we crack ourselves, we laugh. It's helpful. Since Dr. Okora touched a lot on profits, and by the way, I'm um, Machingura, Curriculum and Arts, Professor Machingura, Curriculum and Arts Education, and the prophet. <laughs> this is what I say, yes, not. And the prophet. <laughs> so there is this interesting joke. Uh, which happened where uh, the prophet is toddler played with uh, his father's phone and then uh, 
accidentally, whether accidentally or not, deliberately, the child posted on a WhatsApp group, Facebook, Facebook. So what she put, what the child posted in there, it was more like kiki kiki, kiki kiki gaga, di z z z do do zaga zi. Then about 1,800 followers were busy now posting. I receive, I receive, I receive. <laughs> men of God, you are anointed. <laughs> Thank you, men of God. I receive. <laughs> so the next day, the pastor, the prophet was now apologizing to say, uh, I'm sorry, yesterday my, my naughty child was playing with my phone. So when you saw those kiki ki, ki, it's not me. Those were not his tongue, in tongues. I was not speaking in tongues. It was not glossolalia. It was in fact my child. So some of the people then went out because they were really tired to say, ah, so we thought it was the prophet who was now in the spirit. So don't be always in the spirit. May I call upon our team to come and present uh, uh, the next uh, presenter, our dean, Dr. Banyan, uh, as he comes, let us just give him a bumper. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Prophet. Magic uh, <laughs> But I can just to confirm. Somebody think he's joking. He is also a pastor. So he is a prophet. <laughs> so when I say kiki, they must say I receive. <laughs> <laughs> now yesterday I had the opportunity to introduce everyone who was here. But this morning I was reminded about Mark 4, Mark 6, verse 4. Who knows what it says? <laughs> No, Prophet Majingura, it is, it is as a prophet is not without honor except in his own town. Yeah. yeah, what it means is, uh, as I know to say everybody else, <laughs> I forgot the person I work with, yeah. Dr. Mamfuto. He's so close to me that at times I forget to introduce him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I need to acknowledge that. Now, our, the person I'm going to introduce next, our speaker, ladies and gentlemen, before I say out his name, let me just begin by indicating to you his profile. The next presenter, in Zimbabwe, we normally call them war vets. War vets is a veteran of the liberation struggle in Zimbabwe, a freedom fighter. And one of the very few humble freedom fighters. Mm -hmm. Most people who participated in the liberation struggle, those who actually were moving around with, with guns. Yeah. Some of them, the moment they enter a room, you know. Yeah. But this one, if you don't know, you won't know. He will go away. It's only perhaps the people who have interacted with him who will then tell you, oh, do you know that one is a war veteran? So he's a humble freedom fighter. Yeah. In addition to that, he's a retired aide de camp, assistant commissioner. He is a, sorry, a retired senior assistant commissioner. He is also a former aide de camp to the state president. Well, state president. Yeah. If you go anywhere, you say, I'm from Zimbabwe. They will ah, oh, you are you from Gabes Kandem? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it says quite a lot about our next week presenter. He is currently the acting that a principal director of the curriculum development technical services in the Ministry of Primary and Secondary Education. The gentleman, ladies and gentlemen, published two books, The Language Question in Africa, the second book, Indigenous Languages Creation, Struggles over policy implementation in post-colonial Zimbabwe. Ladies and gentlemen, 
The presenter I'm talking about is Dr. Arthur P. T. Makanda. Please, let us go. picture, they talk about family religion, they flash the picture, and what that 
does then you have to create some opinions and say if this 20 million is coming from uh, the Arab countries, where on earth would somebody give that uh, such amount without really maybe giving to their colleague? The beard and the 20 million then resulted in the minister being a Muslim. And resulted in the education system being Islamized. We were reading from the social media, from our media, our print, also hearing from other uh, sources, even our, our radio. And you say, what's wrong with us Zimbabweans? So, I will start the presentation with um, then, then, yeah, 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 yeah. I must clear my table. Right, we're talking about uh, mass displays. Do we have material? I thought I should come and show you that some people are writing. As we were, as we are arguing, as we were probably kind of saying this does not work, some people were actually writing. And so this is mass displays, this is information and technology. For the ECD, this is for ECDA, and then heritage and social studies. And I, I just thought I should carry the ECDA so that you know people are drawing something and we are going to probably tender uh, then we, we supply uh, the books to schools. Now, I will probably draw your attention to a quotation that uh, has been circulating in the social media by Lord Macaulay. As academics, probably you will then come up with some discussion. Um, right. He said, I have traveled across length and breadth of Africa and I have not seen one person who is a beggar. That is pre-colonial. Who is a thief? Such a world I have seen in this country, Britain. The, the world of thievery or stealing. Hence we have those sent to New Zealand and, and Australia to create new nations. Um, such a world that they had seen in Britain, that he had seen in Britain. Such high, such high moral uh, values, people of such caliber, that I do not think we would ever conquer this uh, country unless, of course, the continent was regarded as one country, unless we break the very backbone of this nation, which is her spiritual, cultural heritage, and spiritual and cultural heritage. Therefore, I propose that we replace her old and ancient education system, her culture. For if the Africans think that all that is foreign and English is good and greater than their own, they will lose their self-esteem, their native culture, and they will become what we want them to be, that's my emphasis, a truly dominated nation. In the presentation somewhere, you will find, um, okay, the next uh, quotation is coming from Benhoff. I think I didn't put it uh, here. It's, uh, to influence the African people, their language must be penetrated by European knowledge and become filled with the spirit of Europe and become a vehicle to European thoughts. Uh, we included in becoming a vehicle uh, of European thought as the academic. <laughs> now that I don't have an African attire pastor. <laughs> yeah. So you will find my, my presentation is not going to be as sequential as what the minister did and the permanent secretary did because we are actually drawing from the same pot. Mine will kind of uh, respond to some issues 
raised yesterday and also that we think they must, uh, we, we, we must talk to um, the issues that were maybe left out. Uh, if you will look at my introduction, I think I would also want to read the, the introduction and give a brief, ex a brief explanation on the introduction. The new curriculum is a response to the nation's demands of, of linking the education system to the country's economy. This is where probably we were missing it. We are on poor position in Africa. But does that translate to the wealth of the, of the country or the development of the country? Or this is where we have all those graduates now thinking as graduates maybe to play plastic balls in the streets. They are supposed to inform policy. They are supposed to create employment. But what do we find them doing? Playing plastic balls in the street. This is not politics, but we are saying as the educationists, as the system, what does it say to us? Is it the right path? What is missing in, in, in the education system? And do we link our education system to the country's economy? Maybe while I'm still on this point, let me just give you an insight of, uh, to our mineral economy. Just a brief, I have a paper with, uh, which contains about 67 minerals and the effects about those minerals. We then want to say, but why are we poor? Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe diamond deposits is estimated to be worth 800 billion, with the mining field said to be holding around 3 billion carats. At the current rate, it will take us as a country 300 years to exhaust the resource. But what is lacking? We use 800 billion in our diamonds and we have 300 years to work on this and I'm sure it's generations and generations. But our education system does not value and beneficiate these things. Uh, it is estimated that Zimbabwe has 2.8 billion tons of platinum spread over 550 kilometer belts of 11 kilometers with stretching from Matabelen south to the north of Mashona Land. This is known as the Great Dyke. It is also estimated that it will take 1,200 years to exhaust Zimbabwe's platinum reserves at the current rate of extraction. Zimbabwe has the highest known reserves of high chrom uh, chromium ore in the world, most of which are found in the Great Dyke. It is estimated that there are reserves of 930 million tons of chromium in Zimbabwe, which will take 1,300 years to exhaust at the current rate of extraction of 700,000 ton, 700, tons per year. In terms of mineral wealth, Zimbabwe is rated as the richest, richest country per capita. It ranks number one out of 142 countries. Zimbabwe is noted for its variety of economic minerals. So, with all these heads in here, why are we poor? The doctors and the professors. What can you do as a doctor? Simple things. We all drive. How many of us can fix uh, a minor problem? Maybe even that the battery has just detached somehow. We may actually want to find, to, to phone uh, some mechanic. And then you just come and say, ah, okay, this is the battery terminal. And you say, okay, I am professor, so and so, thank you, I'm going. So this is our education. 
I always give this example because that day I was traveling from Berewa to Mutare. And, uh, you know, those cars which had those points, it had some carbon. So it stuck. And then midway, I think I was in between uh, Rishawa and Berewa and Mutare in Rishawa and somewhere there. And it was around four with the, the whole family, my wife and two kids there. But we were stuck. And then some good Samaritan, because he then saw the kids, the small kids, he said, I think this gentleman is stuck. He stopped. He said, What is the problem? I said, I don't know. My car is giving me problems. He asked me to start it. And then he said, Okay, let me fix it. He just uh, wiped the carbon on the points and then say, can you start your car? from and says you can go now. I then said, my friend, thank you very much, but I must pay for my ignorance. Then I gave him twenty dollars. I was paying for my ignorance. <laughs> so this is what we do as as as, as Africans. So we are saying the education system and this education system must produce graduates with competencies or skills which will help them to live a happy and fulfilling life. Are we living a happy and fulfilling life? If not, why when we have, I've just uh, uh, talked about the mineral resource. You can think of all other resources. Uh, when I went to Zetara people in school last week, they, they, they've said they are using the water hyacinth to do some biogas. And I said, what would be the next problem? If this uh, experiment succeeds, our next problem will be shortage of the water hyacinth with the water bodies. Now we have a problem with that wheat in our terms. But if that technology succeeds, our next problem will be the shortage of that raw material. Yeah. So we must, we must, we must innovate. But it's a good uh, maybe problem that will then um, grow the the, the hyacinth in our terms and do the biogas. We must have graduates who understand and appreciate and stand up to challenges brought about by the de uh, demands of a changing social, economic, political, or even the natural environment. Why I, act, uh, I actually said probably I need to be introduced as one of the veterans in the first and uh, in the second and third Chumurenga is uh, when we went into the farms, you know the debate that was generated and I was part of those guys who actually started to go into the farms, quiet as I am as given. It's, it, it was probably a risk deceiving. I went in. And uh, there was a debate, I think it was Dr. Mahoso, the late Dr. Chihuahua, and uh, that team on the Zawad. Yeah, that debate. And they said, you know, these guys, uh, they went to the war, they are not learned, they liberated us. Now they have gone into the farms. They were trying to prop up the land reform. They have gone into the farms, still not learned, and look at what they are doing. And then I said, I think yeah, it's a positive contribution. I then donned my barbaric gear and went on into the farms. You need to take risks, that's what I'm only saying. In spite the, the, the fact that you probably are well read. <laughs> <Let's do that. laughs> who will participate, uh, we want the graduates, who will participate meaningfully in the social economic development of the country? Who cherishes or who will cherish the ownership of the means of production? This is where we all maybe are found what do we cherish the ownership of the means of production if i were to say all those in here how many of you have got pieces of land 
Paul were on the side of debating or on the side of saying, I will do the formal thing and apply for land. When somebody was, was saying, I will walk into the farm and then get my piece of land. And as a result, you may not have had one. And if so, now we debate about whether it was good how we went into the farms or not. It's neither here nor there whether it was good or not. But the secret about that thing was uh, somebody was anointed by the traditional leaders of this country to go into the farm and recover that land. The point of Pisa, Yakasimoka. And now we are in the second phase, the point of Tonorera. Now we have, we are using our land. As academics, let's continue to debate whether it was right or wrong. But look at what is happening in South Africa. Link this, what I'm saying, to education. Look at what is happening in South Africa. They now want their land. Even though the academics are saying they don't want it in the Zimbabwe style. But rest assured there will be resistance. Why resistance? Because then you will expose the mineral wealth that we found in these farms. Go to a farm that was owned by Roy Bennett. There was a trusted uh, servant who knew what was um, under the gazebo. There, is a, there was a diamond mine under the gazebo. So they would come and buy and go. So you don't expect someone not to resist when you are saying we are taking this farm. It's not the soil and the grass and the trees that you are taking over. It's also the diamond mine that you are taking over. Uh, let's go to our education system. You must weave the connection. Who are able to situate themselves in a competitive environment, be it local, national, or international. So, our education system must be linked to the economy and we must cherish ownership of the means of production. I'm not sure where these guys have put my pledge. I want to probably then explain the pledge. I've said I'm not going to be sequential. As things come, that's how I'm going to present. And uh, it is typical of uh, fighting in the, in the bush. You may have a formation, but when you are surprised, attack, you, 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 you break the formation. Because if you continue in that formation, you may be wiped. So you must also confuse the enemy in the battle. But I'm not confusing the academia in here. Um, the school's national pledge uh, and sustainable development. What we did then as we were developing um, our curriculum, we said there are certain values, like the values of Ubuntu. I will speak about the, the values of Ubuntu after this, but I, we then said, I think we must inculcate that into our own people. And then let's look at the constitution, the preamble. I think it's about, it's page 15, where the, the preamble in the, constitution, in the constitution is found. And it has these words, Almighty God in whose hands our future lies. I salute the national flag respecting the brave fathers and mothers who lost their lives in the Chiburenga Umfukela. We are proud inheritors of, our, of the richness and of our natural resources. We are, via, uh, we are proud creators and participants in our vibrant tradition and cultures. So I commit to, honest, so, so I commit to honesty and the dignity of hard work. Where is the quarrel? Is it that we are praying? Or is it that we are inculcating the values 
of ownership of the means of production. If you are a proud inheritor of your natural, uh, of your richness and natural resources, what are you? What are we talking about? We are talking about the ownership of the means of production. And does our education system link that? Or we are saying we should be able to read and write and be good employees. I'm talking about minerals. <coughs> Are you talking about owning a mine? Are you thinking about owning a mine now? Or you are now thinking about De Beers and Anglo American? And this apex, what are we thinking about as a people? When I retire, I want to have a bottle store so that I can go there, have fun, and socialize. <laughs> That's ownership of the means of production, is it? No. <laughs> so this is us. The Germans, those who have been in Germany, those who make our bands the highest, the, the top class, top range make the engineers, they don't know how to speak a single word in English, deliberately so. I think if it is, if they now know it's now when people are saying we are globalized, why? So that when you come from here, you don't steal their technology. You can't communicate. <laughs> But say to our Zimbabweans, let's use our languages to teach. They are very quick to raise issues, to debate. When I was doing my research, um, I did language policy and planning. Uh, I, I sent them some questionnaires to the ZBC and other radio stations. I can't even pronounce the long word of a disease that I was asked to say, how do you pronounce this? How do you translate this in Shona? It was, it had something to do with the pneumothorax, something, something, it was quite long. <laughs> and the guy then put his number, cell phone number and name and said, in spite of the fact that it is confidential, yeah, you, 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 can you call me? So, I then said, okay, if we are to suffer this illness, uh, I'm still doing my introduction and in saying 10 minutes. <laughs> Thank you very much. I will rush through because all what has been said um, by the permanent secretary and the minister is also almost what I'll present, but I want to probably incite and interest your minds to think and link the education system. But I was saying what I then, how I responded to that question was, Tikarwara, um, I then wrote in Shona, Tikarwara, Chilwere Church will find a name. We had diamonds before. Until we went into Chiazwa, we then found a name, Moda. Now we were participating. But before then, it was just we were learning about diamonds, about the beers. So, we can do that. Now, when you are a proud inheritor of your natural resource, you must value it, you must benefit that resource. Our problem is, all of us, if we are employed, we then fork out that resource as raw to go and develop other nations. As the academia, we must come up with innovations to value it and beneficiate, and then 
trade with other nations. But how do we do that? We must also then look at the Ubuntu philosophy that the uh, Siet uh, uh, talked about. Why a national philosophy? Uh, I brought very good in the early. Uh, there is an advert that is doing rounds uh, these days. <coughs> says, Mama, Mama, Utemba Upindile, Uchochile Upupu. What are the values in that advert? The mother was this, then said, When Utemba, Abuela. And then, she, then when she realized that the Upupu was given because they bought a certain product, she is not the one then to say, I think maybe you are wrong. It's now the owners of the product saying, Okatenga Kwakat, it's not powerful. What are the values when Temba is repeating the stealing? <laughs> what are the values when I say, just to use the Two gentlemen there, and now to do later. Then I say, Dr. Mahere had four oranges, and Professor Nerera stole two. How many are left? We are at the basics. It's two, isn't it? Then Dr. Mahere, Dr. Mahere with four oranges, and gave Professor uh, Nerera two oranges. How many are left? There are two. But what are the values? The stealing and the giving. And somebody was asking, how do you teach Ubuntu in mathematics, in science? So, <laughs> this is what we are talking about. Um, I'm sure the 10 minutes is, let, let's proceed. Th those are the attributes that we are thinking as, uh, as I make this presentation, I'm also honestly appealing to you to write about Ubuntu. This philosophy is doing rounds in Africa, but very few have written about this. What is it that we are referring to as Ubuntu in our context? Yeah, let, let's proceed. My, my friend, uh, was, we have talked about the national schools page. And the fight was not about um, prey. The fight was about the ownership of the means of production, proud inheritors of richness and natural resources as a people. So you are taking bread from somebody. We can argue on how we lost the 15 billion in our diamonds. But let's look at it from the, this viewpoint. We sell <coughs> our carrots, a diamond carrot, at $80. And when it is polished, it is sold at $2,000. Can we not lose these billions? when we continue to do that. Go to where there is this um, vehicle of critical thinking and problem solving. I'm only saying, th yeah, these are the learner ex one, one slide back. These are the learner ex exit profiles that we have said. Learners can actually come up with what they want to do in, in, in just pictorial form. Look at the guitar there. We all, yeah, we have few schools, uh, musical schools in, 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 in this country, and uh, we have our job praisers and so on and so on. When the minister was talking about uh, the generator, the, compos uh, the composition of music, yeah, uh, I know Professor Zin made some comments about that. But we are saying, as a system, have we uh, looked at that area as a possible area of maybe development, develop the, the, the musicians in all respects. It's, uh, it also will answer your, your, your issue on the timetable. 
We are saying visual and performing arts. Let's look at music. You can't say, for this 40 minutes we are singing. Then, what we were singing, let's dance to that music quietly. Is that possible? So, so these guys will then who are, are, are trying to split hairs. But we are saying you can actually bring in other disciplines like the management of the stage, the deco at the stage, the, the, the costumes and so on. Now it's one discipline that we are saying look at it as visual and performing arts and, and, and create space for that. Now let's go to the next uh, Can you go to that car, the, the standalone car? Critical thinking and problem solving. This is for the ECD. The, the first uh, uh, chart is what's wrong in here. I think we are, we, we are working on it. We want to say what is wrong here. We see bananas growing in a palm tree. We see where the, 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 that pig there up there. We, we, we are saying to our kids, look at what is not normal in this in these pictures. Let's go to the to the car now. When it's when it has a, a flat tire, what shape does it take? Is it a square? Is it a triangle? And if it's not a triangle, why? We are trying to put some concepts in the minds of the learners to say, when a, tire, when a car is a flat tire, it doesn't take the shape of a triangle. A triangle is there, a square is there, but that's not its position. We don't use triangles there. Unless you then want to say, I want to reinvent the wheel and have it gliding, then you can have a triangle. So we are saying that will stick into their minds to say, but why not? And then if they want to innovate, they can. If they want to say now with the with the square and the front tire and and with the, with the area where we have that nest and so on, now it interests the learners to critically think. And they will then do some research. And I said in one of my writings, as universities, the new curriculum is saying research is starting maybe at junior level. As universities, do you want to continue to have it as uh, what do we call what do we normally write? This is in partial fulfillment of this, this, this. If you start in, uh, the, uh, the research from maybe grade three thereabout, will it remain a partial fulfillment of your study? We may we must think about these things and say, uh -uh, maybe yes, maybe no. So, the learner is profiles. From that, let, let, let's proceed. We are saying, we are talking about uh, critical thinking. An exit profile is a coherent, unified expression of the essential knowledge, skills, attitudes, and abilities learners acquire, acquired at any level of their learning and should be helpful to the learner in the real world of work. The exit profile is an essential tool for developing, revisiting, and evaluating programs. This is what we are trying to say we are coming up as um, a system. I know the other time I was told, it's, 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 um, I, I now have 10 minutes, and now I think I have the 10 minutes now. Um, go to the issue where we are talking about um, the knowledge, the, the skills, right? We, we have tried to explain these skills. We have the knowledge skills, we have the, you can, you can go, you can scroll again. Right, those are the skills, 
the go ahead. Right, with technological skills, enterprising skills, self-management skills, management skills, learning and innovation. We have tried to explain those and I will leave the presentation uh, with, uh, with um, I think, the, secretar the secretariat. But um, we are saying as you acquire those skills, the issue of um Ubuntu must also be central. It must be central. Yes, I hear you. I am almost uh, concluding. Um, they don't want me to do like my principals did yesterday. Uh, so when the prophet has spoken, <laughs> listen. But I am concluding. I'm sure you have all seen this. In the ministry, we are talking about. STEM or STEAM. Why STEAM? We are not conflict, conflicting with the higher intention. But if you have this bottle, look at the doors there. What is it? Firstly, this water is from a Chinese company, is it? Isn't it? And ZLG means Zimbabwe life is good. Right? And those doors, if you look closely, they are heads of families. There are two families there celebrating Zimbabwe life, which is good. Yeah. And then you have your, your waves to show that they came from China. And then look at the processes that you go through when you are coming up with the, this bottle, you have your step, isn't it? And your art is there. This is the marketing gimmick. And so we have our steam. And this is why probably the secretary was saying um, we, also, we want to embrace everything else. But um, I want to, because I thought I would have time, or still, uh, your time, then the professor, the, the prophet, the pastor is looking at me, and I think I must conclude. Um, I will leave that uh, with uh, with, the, with the secretary, like I said. But we are appealing to you all to write about our Zimbabwean stories from all angles, be it science, be it maths, and so on. Start to experiment even um, in, in, in the languages. Um, having talked about the language, you, you said the, the your curriculum and uh, this guy says economic policy. I, I said uh, language. I wanted to respond to this question yesterday. What is our language policy? Our problem currently is um, the government has not yet finally decided where the language act will reside. Is it in the Ministry of Primary? Is it in the Ministry of Higher? Is it with the Ministry of Justice? Or is it with the, with the, the employment? Uh, ministries, because they insist on maybe in, in, in our course uh, the language of record is English. We have not yet changed. And uh, we, when you are looking for employment and when you are looking for your undergrads, English is a must. So where is uh, the language act going to reside if we are to have that end. Which ministry? We need to have a language board that will help to decide. So when you were asking why uh, ending only at, at infant, you, yeah, it was really pertinent, but these are the policy problems that maybe you have raised in this conference to say the new curriculum and national policies is one of the policies. And finally, finally, 
I told you I was an ADC to the state president. If you have listened to his speech, speeches, he was then saying, Deutsche Pets is the shit. <laughs> then you have some 30 minutes of that talk. Check <laughs> Pets <laughs> City, sir. You have some 10 minutes of that talk. And then you say, now I will end my speech. So you have three endings. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to end by saying our major challenge in the new curriculum is the attitude. Probably we have not explained some of these things. Uh, the other uh, uh, problem or challenge is the spirit of resistance and lack of interest in implementing the curriculum. This we're talking to our own uh, personnel. And the polar polarization of the process, the so-called Zirabasanga Commission and the ministry. Huh? We are now on two standpoints, isn't it? One is saying this is the so-called where we get we got some ideas. Now we are polarizing instead of moving together. And lack of traction and resistance to move uh, from work as usual. So these are the challenges that we we have. But I am pleased to say now that we are implementing the curriculum, the new curriculum, uh, there is now traction. Never mind the debate where, whether we should call it the new curriculum or the updated and what have you. We stick to what was agreed, what was uh, approved by cabinet and parliament is the wedding, the new curriculum. And the other uh, wedding uh, of updated or revised is just to make things simpler. Yes, we're doing certain things. If you go to Happy Primary School, from grade two upwards, they actually do sciences and your grade five can tell you whether this water is suitable to drink or not. Go there, they will tell you this Harare water is not suitable because of the pH of the, the water and so on, and from a grade five somewhere. But what we were doing as a system was we were not examining that kind of learning. They were doing it to prepare the learners so that when they go to form one, they will not be like you and I. We started to know about the beaker when we were in form one. And you then start to say, but what is this? I started to know about the word assault when I joined the police force and I said, what is this now? When we were defining that assault. <laughs> Life skills orientation. I, when I was a superintendent, that's when I knew why, how to, um, to be in a plane. And uh, after 10 hours of flight, refusing to eat the food served in the plane because I was given $150 uh, as some upkeep. And I didn't know that the food in the plane was paid for. So when I was flying from, I, from here, I went to South Africa yeah. in the morning and boarded the one to Malaysia around six. So I did not have anything. So it's 10 hours. So when they were serving their dinner, I said, uh-uh. And unfortunately, I was only the only black guy in there. I said, uh-uh until somebody the following day when they were serving breakfast he whispered to me to say it has been paid for <laughs> that's when i asked for english breakfast
agreed with the quotation to influence the African people, their languages must be penetrated by European heritage. And uh, I think the tragedy is not in using foreign languages. It lies in believing that we should not use our languages to articulate our thoughts, or that we cannot use our languages to engage in serious academic business. I remember the lecturer Wambiwa writing an article in the Sunday Mail saying, advocating the use of African languages in teaching and in making use of them for serious academic business as well as even in a course or in any business. But uh, when we were de debating the issues, some people said, ah, is that really possible? How can you teach mathematics in short? How can you teach biology in short? How can you teach physics in short? Fortunately, in 1998, there was a conference here, which I also attended, organized by the Faculty of Arts. Uh, and then there was a doctor in Rome from particularly he was the last, who was then able to demonstrate how can you teach biology and physics in Indebella. But still, we believe it's not possible. Now, even here, we are conversing in a foreign language. Or perhaps is English now not a foreign language? Has it become an African language? <laughs> These are the questions that I think are uh, arising from the presentation by Dr. Makanda. <coughs> so, he was able then to articulate the reason why we needed to come up with a new curriculum, the demand to link the education system to the country's economy. And I think this does not just apply to Zimbabwe, it applies to all African countries. So if those people, our colleagues from South Africa, colleagues from Burundi and other African countries who are here, I think we can benefit from the presentation by Dr. Makanda. Uh, the need to link the education system to our economies. Dr. Makanda also explicated the relationship between education and development, linking to the extraction of the natural resources. And the, the challenge, I don't know we are going to be able to rise up to it. Or when he says, what is our role in national development? Yes, we have been told about the mineral resources that are underground. Mm -hmm. Not just in, well, you gave an example of Zimbabwe, but most African countries are like that academics, how are we going to respond to the challenge which he posed. Then he also talk, uh, talked and engaged the issue of the philosopher of Ubuntu. Mm -hmm. I, I think from the presentation, it kind of reminds me of what we discussed yesterday, the need for more collaboration among intellectuals in the, in the Ministry of Primary and Secondary Education, but perhaps also even in the Ministry of Higher Education and the technology development. Where we have academics have been writing about Ubuntu, but the people in Zimbabwe, in the ministry, are not even aware of the debates that academics here are engaged in. Yeah. Uh, I have a colleague, he, unfortunately he's not here, Makua Aza, yeah. has been writing about Ubuntu. I have also been imitating, trying to come to write something about Ubuntu. Mm -hmm. I, I call Makua Aza Professor Ubuntu. Professor Ubuntu. Mm -hmm. He's not a professor, but from the writings, I think we can glean quite a lot. Uh, Dr. Zamasaka is also well. I think for young people, normally don't think about it because he's written. He articulated the philosopher only in the document that they produced. So perhaps I think we need to just engage each other. Then he also, then there will be a book before the end of this one. Yeah, perfect. That's right. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, Continuous engagement between yeah. the ministry and the university, not just the university of Zimbabwe, but all academics. And then you went on to articulate the learner exit profiles and the need to teach critical thinking. Uh, yeah, that is very brilliant. But I also think when we open the people's minds, let them truly be open and we accept that they have thoughts that it turns me not to agree with. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Makan. Uh, my, I said, could you? Yeah. Uh, before I go, the, the next presenter should come and uh, 
address the participants. Let me acknowledge the presence of the professors like academic professors, Professor Ben Sanashir. Those who were here yesterday, I think you know that he is the one who officially opened the work conference and welcomed the conference delegates. Thank you very much, Professor for coming. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the next presenter. Uh, let me talk about uh, his accomplishments before I pronounce his name. Uh, academic veteran, he has a doctorate uh, with a double honors degree in education and history, a master's double honors in, in education and history, baccalaureate double majors, education and history plus electives, uh, chemistry, physics, biology, economics, fine arts, political sciences, philosophy, sociology, and psychology of administration and education. Professional qualifications is teaching, lecturing, practical in higher education, student and academic staff counseling, primary and higher teacher certificate, senior research fellow. Lecturing and teaching experience, primary and secondary school teacher, training primary and school teachers, training secondary school teachers, professional development university, professional develop, professionally developing university lecturers, <coughs> and he lectured at Oklahoma State University for four years, Florida International University, and earned an associate professorship, University of Minnesota Morris, Purdue University, and earned a full professorship. Administration experience, Senior Research Fellow, University of Zimbabwe, National University, National Education Commission Chairperson, which we normally call the Zanzibar Commission. <laughs> that is the Commission of Inquiry into Education and Training. Uh, Acting Vice Chancellor.